Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means we're starting off the week with an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below, letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Samuel McGreal. He has 310 upvotes, which is pretty darn high for Loadout. It's the Call of Duty Ghost Loadout. Primary is the MPX, AKA the Honey Badger. Then we have the R2 Suppressor, Coyote Red Dot, Vertical Grip, Paint Spray Urban. For the sidearm, we're gonna be using the MP443 Suppressor and Spray Urban again. This is supposed to be the Grotch from Call of Duty Ghost. Class is Engineer, Field Upgrade Offensive. Gadget one is the MK153 Small. Then we have the EOD Bot and M67 Frag Grenade. Samuel says, this here is your average Call of Duty Ghost loadout. Most COD players have used the Honey Badger at least once and I tried to copy it as much as I could. The MPX platform boasts superb firepower and looked the most like the Honey Badger with the suppressor. This turned out as a stealthy loadout with both weapons, keeping you off the minimap. Use the small to snipe long range enemies or put up a fight with any vehicle. The EOD bot can even be used as an RCXD like in Black Ops and you can electrocute people to death. This is a tribute to COD Ghost since it will slowly disappear with Advanced Warfare taking over. Now the MPX is an absolute beast of a weapon, probably the best PDW out there currently. And recently I was on a live stream with Darkness429 and he told me he had something like 54 service stars with the MPX, which is absolutely insane. And I can see why, this gun is a beast. It's better than most carbines. The damage in close quarters is unbelievable. It didn't get reduced to that five shot kill requirement in close quarter combat, the 24 damage max. It's actually maintained over 25 damage for its max damage per shot. So you get a nice clean four shot kill in CQB. Probably less if you manage to nab a headshot. Combine that with an 850 round per minute rate of fire and a somewhat easy to manage recoil and you've just got an absolute monster of a weapon. In fact, when I'm running engineer from now on, thinking about probably running MPX default instead of running with a carbine. I like the ACWR and the AK-5C. They are great weapon platforms, probably a little bit more effective at longer ranges, but the MPX is just so effective at close quarters that it's hard not to want to use it. And you'll see here from the gameplay that I was fortunate enough to get into a Rush server on some of the final stand maps. And I gotta say, Rush is actually pretty good on a lot of these final stand maps. It's just hard to find the servers, at least on PC. Rush is still one of my favorite games game modes. I think it's one of the more tactical game modes out there and it still offers a lot of action. You have defense, offense, different classes for different scenarios. It's just a lot of fun all around. I hope Rush becomes a little bit more popular of a game mode. I think it really got stunted because it had some problems in the beginning of BF4. When the game first came out, the ticket counts weren't very good, so nobody really wanted to play it. And now there's just not a lot of servers playing it. Hopefully we can kind of get it repopulated again. And if I end up getting a Battlefield server, uh, I might do a dedicated Rush server or something like that. Although I think I'm gonna be getting a Hardline server just because of the cool server customization tools. But they've also talked a bit about bringing those tools to the Battlefield 4 side. So if that happens, I may have to get a server. Now I like this little flanking route here on Hammerhead in Rush, dropping down the elevator shaft to get inside the mountain here. We had a teammate go down before me, kind of distract the enemies, allow me to get a foothold here, and then I'm gonna wait for my squad mates to try and spawn on me. This is a very, very far end of the map flank. It's a little tricky to pull off, but if you got somebody in your squad that can put a spawn beacon at the top of the elevator shaft, then you can keep up some good different flanking routes in this part of the map because it's very important when trying to push into the heart of the mountain because it's so choke pointy, you just have to attack from as many different angles as possible. And the suppressor certainly helps out for any flanks, although in this situation, my teammates are all around me. Many of them are not using suppressed weapons, so the enemy still pretty much knows exactly where I am. But in a lot of other situations when perhaps you're going solo or there's not a lot of guys around you, then it can keep the enemy team guessing as to where their teammates are getting shot from. One of the nice things about combining a suppressor with the MPX is that its normal bullet velocity is only 340 meters per second. So a suppressor does lower it, but it's not gonna really reduce the effectiveness of the MPX at range too much. It's already pretty ineffective at trying to hit moving targets. And you're gonna see a few clips in this video of me just completely missing moving targets because I'm not leading enough because the bullet velocity on this gun is so painfully slow. And here we are doing a little bit of skeet shooting. This is the problem when the defensive team 
has the ability to parachute in on spawn beacons. They can kind of get up into cheap defensive areas and we're trying to keep the top of that oil tank clear. In a situation like that where there's tons of mortars flying through the air, again the suppressor both for primary and secondary is a great thing to have because people shooting mortars are just looking for little red triangles popping up on the minimap. They're not going to pop up if you're not spotted and you're not making a signature from your unsuppressed weapon. So that's a nice feature of it too, being the victim of mortar fire a little bit less. Now this loadout is actually designed pretty well. The use of the small for long range targets is great, not just armor targets. The small is a great sniping alternative, especially for a stationary target or a clump of targets. It can actually get two kills with one shot because of the splash damage. It's a one shot kill. It does travel very slowly, so hence the stationary targets being your ideal targets. But again, it's very accurate. So as long as your aim is on point, you're going to get your kill. And of course, the utility against armored targets and even air targets goes without saying. It's a rocket launcher. You're an engineer. You take out vehicles. That's its primary focus. But again, in infantry intensive maps like this rush game here you can certainly use it as an anti-personnel weapon now i do frequently bring up the point that there isn't a big advantage to having a suppressor when you're running around a lot of friendly players who aren't using suppressed weapons they're going to give away your location and the use of your suppressor is going to be a little bit less but when you have a map like say hangar 21 here where you don't really have choke points as much as you just have a very large open lane to approach your enemies then the suppressor will come in handy because your teammates are basically going to be spotting themselves with their unsuppressed weapons and you won't. So the enemies are basically going to be looking to kill your teammates, giving you plenty of ample time to basically zero in on them and get some nice clean kills without having to worry about too much return fire. And I gotta say, Hangar 21 really does shine as a map while playing it in the rush game mode. It really isn't that great of a map in Conquest, in my opinion. Uh, just a way too open map. The layout of it doesn't make a lot of sense, but in rush, you're kind of constantly pushing up the side of this hill. And it's really cool, both offensively and defensively. Offensively, you're always kind of looking up and seeing the enemies towering above you, shooting down at you, and you kind of have to dart between cover, working your way up this mountain. And defensively, you feel like you've got this awesome fortress and you can just look down and see all the enemies trying to come up basically chuck grenades on top of them, shoot them with bows, do whatever you really want. It's a really, really enjoyable rush map, certainly one of the better ones out there. If I had to make any tweaks at all to this loadout, I might try running with an angled foregrip instead of a vertical foregrip. Both attachments actually have their benefits, but I think for this weapon, I would probably try burst firing a little bit more, in which case the angled foregrip would help out ever so slightly more. Either way, the MPX is an absolute beast of a gun. That pretty much wraps it up for this episode of Loadout. Don't forget to leave your comments down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with for next episode. And I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.